evening, all. You know, most crimes are solved by routine police work. The lab boys sort out the scientific evidence, and the rest of us concentrate on getting statements from people who might know something. But one of the first things a policeman learns in the job is to be very careful when it's a question of eyewitness evidence. Sometimes, though, it's the only evidence we've got. I suppose when you heard that music, it brought back to some of you very happy memories of the good times of policing. You remember the police? They used to be tall, good-looking men who patrolled round and round your areas, cutting down crime. But of course, those days have now gone, and we're reduced now to catching our own criminals. And today, I want to talk to you a little bit about how I've spent the last 40 years of my life. I suppose I'm getting to that age now where young women are turning their heads onto one side and speaking rather loudly to me. I'm getting old. And as such, I think it's about time that I passed on one or two bits of information to you young guys and girls out there so that you can take over from where I left off. Because there's no point in me not telling you what I've found, because otherwise you're going to have to repeat the same mistakes that I made. Napoleon said about his generals, I don't care what they've done, are they lucky? And one of the most important things for an investigator, a detective, is to be really lucky. And you can't really buy that. You must get yourself a gut feeling. And you must also be able to observe your fellow human beings and watch them. Because we're all creatures of habit. So before you start thinking about becoming an investigator, you must watch very carefully and listen to what's being said to you. Listen for catchwords in what people are saying to you. I hear what you say. I feel. I can touch. All those types of expressions give you an idea of the type of person that you're dealing with. So that's by the voice. Listen to the length of sentence that a person is giving to you. That will tell you his general description and background. Listen to his vocabulary. So a man working in a builder's yard who uses incredible vocabulary, he's probably quite a bright guy. And what's he doing working in a builder's yard? Or in a warehouse, humping and dumping, when he's intellectually quite clever. Those are very dangerous people, and I've met lots of them in my police career. I also look for shoes. I'm very keen on looking at shoes where they're made, whether the shoes are down at heel at the back. Yes, down at heel, there's the expression. Whether the shoes are leather, whether they're leather sold or corfam, because you can kid people with jewellery, you can kid people with smart suits, but actually you can't kid people as far as your shoes are concerned. When I look for investigators, I look for the people who come with an attitude. For example, if you're going to watch a house, the clever investigator comes with a dog lead and can walk up and down outside a house all day carrying a dog lead. And everybody looking out of the window will say, hey, there's a guy looking for his dog. It also enables you to go into a back garden. Or if you're caught, you're looking for your dog. Tricks of the trade. People on surveillance that I see never carry anything. But just look around at the general populace and you'll see that they actually carry goods. Now today we're going to have a look at in-house crime. 70% of all the thefts in factories, warehouses, shops, offices and premises are from staff's own theft. Two-thirds of your staff are likely to be corrupt. One-third of your customers are likely to be corrupt. Yes, I give you a chance to think about that. Why are the cameras on the outside of the building? Hell, I've never, ever found out why. The cameras actually should be looking at your own staff. Now, is crime seasonal? Well, it's a good question. Because my business throughout the years has gone up and down throughout the year and some months are very poor and others are absolutely fantastic. 
so it's going to be seasonal. And the highest crime time is... Yes, you're ahead of me. It's Christmas. November, December and January. But it also jumps up in August. Now, why should it jump up in August? Yeah, the staff are on holiday, but actually it's not the staff, because if they're not there, they're not stealing. It's the management that are on holiday, because management are terrifically important, because they supervise. And when we are called upon to investigate, the average time that the thefts have been going on are seven months. There are five people involved. The average figure of losses is 70,000 before they contact me. And that points to three things. Somebody in supervision. One, knows what's going on and is involved. Two, knows what's going on and is turning a blind eye or is completely useless. And in over 50% of the time, I estimate over the 40,000 people that we've caught over the time I've been in charge of my company, I've assumed that it's normally rotten management who haven't a clue about what's going on. For example, in a place called McCuncliff, they sent a manager to look after a timber yard in McCuncliff, which is a Welsh-speaking area, and they sent him from Chester. Now, what type of management does tricks like that? So now you're going to come with me into my world of crime, and we're going to have a look at one or two bits and pieces that we filmed some time, time ago. The people in it are not criminals. Interesting, they're all left-handed as well, and I don't quite understand how that took place. But just have a look at what is going on. Now, to steal, come in to the, be the criminal. Try and think as a criminal. Put yourself into the criminal's moccasins for half an hour, Walk a bit of distance and you'll see how you can catch criminals. For example, think it through. You need to tax your car for a whole year. But you can't afford it. So you send off for a tax disc. You get a tax disc. You then lose the tax disc, accidentally on purpose, and then you send off for a second tax disc. You've now got two tax discs. You can return the second one and say you're taking the vehicle off the road and you've got yourself a free tax disc. There are vehicles that I know now, heavy goods vehicles, that have got the wrong set of number plates on them. Duplicate vehicles, doppelganger vehicles. It's all out there to be thought of by you as a criminal. If you can put yourselves into the mind of the criminal to think criminally, have you only got one driving license? Why have you only got one driving license? If you're going to get done for drunk driving, you need a second one. Come on, you've got to think this is what people are planning. Come with me now into my world of corruption and crime and watch what's going on. In the first incident you're going to see, it's to do with time. There are X number of people working in these premises. During the refreshment period, in the middle of the day, the manager goes out and leaves another person in charge. The person that you'll see brushing shortly is the man that was left in charge on a Saturday. And every Saturday, this guy, who didn't get extra money for it, was in charge. Investigations are absolutely wonderful. Crime, you can see. Nothing you can think of from delivering hot petrol so that it goes into the ground too high, thieving on the deliveries by pouring it back into their own vehicles on the uh, petrol. You, you just every trade that you can see. I watched a couple of weeks ago in a city centre of London club, two men with a small calculator next to the till, and they were thieving the money and they were using bottle tops as five pound bottle tops and 20 pound bottle tops so they knew how much they could catch. It's one of the oldest fiddles, but of course each generation that comes along has to reinvent. You're going to see the skip trick, so common, the dustbin trick, so common. So come along now, have a look what I see, and then you'll realize what I've been doing for the last 40 years. And if you have been watching, 
Thank you very much. So there's the manager going out for his lunch, always at the same time, one till two, and that's our chance to come in. That's a quiet and discreet, nondescript vehicle coming into the yard. Now look where we're going to go. All those pallets in front there. People can't see us. There's the skip. Look at those pallets. There's thousands of pounds worth there that can be stolen. Do you keep open for lunch? Yes, we do. So you're on the half staff between, say, one and two o'clock? That's right. You notice I'm whistling. This is to alert my partner that I'm about. I'll go and see them in the trade counter. It's enough. So now we're paying for the petrol. Each one of those pallets that goes into those small items is about five, six pounds. As you notice, we weren't checked coming in, so nobody knows what we've got in there. And sometimes we put a dog in there. The dog keeps the security guards away. It's an old trick, it still works. Go on, give us a few on. How many is that then now? Seven. How many? Seven. Seven. It's joking. Ah, come on, it's only been here three weeks. And he's been left in charge of a yard with four million pounds worth of product. Got any problems? There's a couple more here. Oh, come on, it's more my job's work. No, it's okay, pal. You'll be all right. Uh, wait till you've been here. Give him a drink. Go and give the lad a drink. Nah, sorry, no. Nah. Go on, you'll be all right. Nah. Will you go and get us that lad? What about Saturday mornings? Do you open Saturday? Yes. Saturday afternoon? Well, we open Saturday mornings. Yeah. Um, and what we do is we divide the staff up and they, they work one in three. One in three. So every Saturday morning, you, you've got about... You've got three or four people in on us. And does the manager come in every Saturday morning? Uh, not every Saturday, no. Who's in charge then? Well, he's, uh, we've got a very good yardman, been with us for years. Yes. And uh, generally he's in charge when the manager's not. He knows all the products, does he? Oh, he does, yeah. Oh, he's been with us for years. Yeah. Real reliable sort of chap. What you would call the salt of the earth? Oh, absolutely. There's the salt of the earth, brushing away. Friend of a friend. He's given a little list of stuff that to get for us. He can get it out for us, it's a regular trade. And that's how it's done. And he's been told by the manager to tidy up. So he's going in for lead. Each one of these rolls is 60 pounds. It's green. You have to know your products. Code 3, code 4 is blue, code 5 and above is red, and that's used in seaside ports because it's heavy in wind, puts heavier lead on. You have to know these things. Here's the skip trick now. Everybody sees what he's doing. Find the rubbish away. How high is the fencing? Is it, is it good fencing? Eight foot six? Well, certainly along the railway line, it could be better. It's uh, it's not been renewed for a good many years. I yeah. think it must have been put up by the railway originally. Yeah. You see the fencing? It's facing inwards. It's the wrong way. Just throw a coat over it, you can get in. He works there. He's also the reference if the alarm goes off. 
so he can come in any time he wants. He can even set the alarm off so he can come in and steal. The lead store's locked up, so that's why it's got the lead out. It's massive theft in those pallets, especially if they're blue or yellow. Some of them are red. What about break-ins? Do you have any of those? Um, yeah, we've had uh, four or five over the last, uh, what, three years. Do you think those break-ins are increasing in number? Well, not really. They seem to uh, be fairly uh, irregular. We had the last one about, I think, five months ago. And that was caused by the manager realising that he'd stolen too much stock. So he arranged a spoof break-in, then wrote off to the insurance company everything that he'd been stealing. It happens. Those are burglar alarm uh, bars across there, so he's got to be careful. He could probably turn the burglar alarm code off himself if he wanted. Those are the buttons that are dirty. The only ones that they press are dirty, so you can virtually get the code if you look carefully, especially if you're a crook. If you thought about it, you'd know how to defeat burglar alarms in any case, because they can't see through glass. So a little bit of glass over the lens stops the burglar alarm working. He's not wearing gloves, you notice. Mainly because scenes of crime will never come to a job like this. And secondly, he works there. And this he does regularly. The bird song tells you it's early morning. Try and get his description. He's locking it up, doesn't want to be seen. He can do it again. Nice job. Now, let's see if I can take that lead back the following working day and get some credit. Here we are. Watch this bit here. That's a VAT fiddle. The builder can fill in as much as he wants now. Make a fortune from the VAT return. Hello, Hello mate. All right. Come on, thanks, you. Oh, smashing. Uh, we were working on site this morning. We've got this over. Can we return it, please, for a bit of credit? Yeah, no problem. Can I say so? I'll take it for you. I'm not sure what I've Yeah, I think that's it, isn't it? Go for it. You see, I just stole him this pen he didn't notice. See if you can see me getting his other pen. Are you busy? Yeah, doing very well, thanks. Yeah. Not so bad, not so bad. You're not going to charge his restocking, are you? Well, I should do really 15 Which is pen. Uh, it's going to go. Yeah, he doesn't There's his okay, pen gone now. Yeah, Show it to him. Tell me about your goods return back to stock. I want to bring some goods back, say that I purchased this morning. Yeah. Well, that does happen from time to time. Right. And uh, normally we'd charge a 15% restocking charge. Unless I was a good customer. Well, yeah, I'm not saying that uh, that happens in every case. Right. Um, as far as refunds are concerned, where we're talking about cash sales as opposed to credit sales, um, the local manager has the authority to refund up to £25. No. That speaks for itself. Common trick. Garages where you give the exact amount, they just throw the money in the till. If you see that happens, they're on the fiddle. Click it through. As long as they keep the theft down to about 5% of the turnover, which might be a million a year, and they're all right. Don't overdo it. That's the secret. So you see where the till is? Absolutely in the wrong place. By the door. Ah, oh, it could be stolen, lock, stock and barrel. Oh, dear. Which ticket do you give the customer? Do you actually give him the top copy of the ticket? Um, the white yes, copy? Yes, we do, actually. Yes, it is the top copy, yes. Right, and he goes into the yard. What do your staff do with that ticket? Do they take it? 
Name's Jones. Looks normal, doesn't it? Oh, we all make mistakes. Oh, That's the manager. I'll save you a bit on the VT. How's, it, how's he going to save that? Yeah, fake too much anyway. Always useful. How can he do that? Hmm. Old fashioned system. But think of the variations on the theme here. Help yourself. Oh, I wish I was that man, I would help myself. The new electronic tills have got buttons underneath them that you can press, put your hand underneath as a little button. You can open the till and steal without it registering no sale. Complete nightmare. Whoever designed these latest electronic tills with that override wants the head feeling. Ah, look now. He's copying off the top onto the bottom. How much is it? Oh, 20% discount he's giving for himself. I know of 30 ways that people steal from tills, and that's just one of them. Ah, oh, till draw still open. Let's go through your system that myself as a, a builder comes into your premises. Have we got any signs in the premises to indicate what the system is? I'm coming in for the first time. Do I come into the premises Get a ticket in your trade counter. You give me a ticket. Well, let me just go through it. Yeah. Uh, when a customer comes in for the first time, he uh, goes into the office right. and um, to the uh, trade counter, mm. and uh, he will get a, uh, a ticket yeah, for whatever he wants. Um, he then takes that ticket to the uh, yard people, yeah. and they serve him. What happens when you're busy? Will customers actually serve themselves? Oh, I, they're, they're not supposed to, but I'm sure it goes on. Absolutely goes Let's on. Let's talk about the physical parameters of your yard. How big is it? Altogether, it's um, the whole site, including uh, external and internal storage. It's uh, just under the acre. High-value items, are they close up to where the management is? Um, well, the one where we keep the most expensive materials is about halfway down the yard. So the answer is no. Can the entrance to this particular shed be seen by management? No. Trade counter? Um, well, it should be able. No. Yeah, it should be able to see it. No. This is what the staff inside can see. They've covered the windows. Sometimes the staff do that deliberately. I've, I've seen the yard covered in bricks. How many staff? Let's talk about yourself. How many staff have you got? Well, altogether, they're including um, our three drivers, yeah. there'll be, uh, and the manager, there's 14. Yeah. Any of those new? Oh. Help yourself, because there's nobody about being lunchtime. Oh. Can you hurry it up? Uh, yes, sir. What is it with you? Well, one of these. Um, just one. Uh, £10.80 yeah. they are. 10 80 Yeah. Um, no, I think it's £32 a roll. Monopole, I believe it is. Yes, I think it's £32 no, pound a roll. No, ten eighty. I had one the other day. Uh, well, I was pretty sure of that. Um, uh, I've got the bloody receipt here somewhere. Uh, well, you see, the thing is, I'm a little unsure of the price. I'm new here. Well, your manager sold it to me. Did he? Oh. I'm always buying. £10.80, yeah, say. Well, right. well, let That's me just check the price. Of course. Discount? Yeah. Uh, oh, I see. Um, Look, no, that's it. 1080. Oh, that's the one. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'll make it that one then. Oh, dear. 1080. 
and for some time now we've been very concerned about the results we're getting from uh, one of these branches. Mm -hmm. um, very difficult for us to put our finger on anything, but uh, the, re the results are just not as good as, as we're getting uh, from the rest. Yeah. Um, but are you a heavy side and light side of this branch? Yes. yes. Bit of a mixture. Which, yes. is, which is which? More, more heavy side. More heavy side? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is us coming in one of our vehicles. Now just look at us. We're coming onto the premises. The security man is probably the lowest paid man there. He hasn't got a Mac and you notice it's raining. So it's a good day to come when it's raining. And we're now allowed in the premises. Now you'll notice he doesn't know what we came in with. This is a way bridge because we're going to get some material, some aggregate. So we come onto the way bridge to get a weight. Now it's up to us as thieves or investigators to test the system. We've got to be as heavy as possible here. So in one instance we saw a spare wheel filled with mercury. There's me putting 18 stone onto the weights so I've paid for the fuel to come to the premises. Right, so we've now got a weight for, as he thinks, the weight for that vehicle. But one of the things in security is that the obvious is nearly always wrong. And we're up to mischief. Watch. Dear, the tarpaulin's fallen out at the back and filled with water. We've been weighed with all that water. Shall we go back and tell him that... No, perhaps not. We have to look round to make sure it's all right. of a theme I've seen guys leaning out of a upstairs building with brushes pushing the weight down on vehicles to make somebody pay more variations of themes I think new we see that's a clean lorry now to go and get some aggregate Loosen the weight. How you doing? All right. Well, I'm right out here, first of all. I've come for that lug this morning. Uh, is the father still all right? No, it's only a good thing, I think. That one's not worth it, is it? Go on, then. Not worth risking to go to prison for, for a fiver. For a tenner's all right. That says it all, doesn't it? Here we go. Never trust weights. Never believe what you're told as far as weights are concerned. That could be even worse if it was wet. It's been raining, so it's going to be heavier than it should be. That's the problem with some of these places. You don't even get the stuff in the first place because the delivery driver steals it before it gets to the factory. Here we go now onto the way bridge. Now we're trying it on. This is very silly what we did here because we're now lighter going out than we were coming in. The back axles, we left them off the way bridge. The guy in here got very upset. He thought we were having him over as if. Simply more than that. 
just up for the cup. Oh, well, we made a mistake. <laughs> no trouble here, pal. Watch my matey get upset and hit the brakes. That sends the machine absolutely crazy. Watch. Bosh. So we really tried it on there. Now we're off to get past the security on the gate. It's raining, it's lunchtime. Oh, look everybody, look what they've left out. 30 kg roofing felt, 40 to 60 a roll, and it's saying, have me. There's an employee wandering around. I'm big and friendly. I'm busy. I'll just take a roll of roof and fight. If we get stopped, we've got the answer. We're going to pay for it to the security guy. How much is that? 120? That'll do it. It's a nice little drink for us. There's a roofing vent here, take my coat off. Staff coming, show it to him so there's no subterfuge. He nods back. We put it in the cab. That's okay because they won't check coming in. They won't check us coming out and I've covered it with my coat. You won't check, you see. Recently, we found that the, pet, the diesel pumps were being left open so we could fill our vehicle with diesel. That's the other customers knew as well. Here we are. Different security man, did you spot that? This one's very efficient. But if you notice, the stairs that he goes up got rust on. I don't normally do that, he's showing off for us. It's okay, very cool. He's not seen. Cheerio. All the best. Well, there, my friends, is something of what I've been doing over the last 40 years. I hope you enjoyed it. That's only one small bit. Five million pounds worth of silver stolen down in Kent to a hundred thousand tonnes of cement stolen from the Thames. Multiply a tonne by 20 bags and you get some idea of the size and scope. The building trade losing 650 million pounds worth of product a year. Not reported to anybody. The police haven't got a clue. And I throw to you that there hasn't been a million days since Christ died. And we bundle these enormous figures about. But the other trades, the licensing trade, the food trade, are all full of fiddles. It's up to you now to come into my industry and help me to retire because I'm getting tired and old. If you have been watching, thank you very much. I think I'd have done the same. Good night, all.